I mean, as, as a sort of um, someone who's not a great consumer of art, my gut reaction was actually that I really liked it and I thought that it really changed the um, atmosphere of the space. Because um, obviously it was a blank wall before. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, you've done already. Smile. Oh, that's great. Oh, could you sign out, please? Thank you. So, yes, I feel it changes the space in, in a really positive way. Um, despite the fact that they're not, you know, pictures of sort of like laughing, happy people or whatever. Um, I think it's a positive thing that inhabiting the space. Um, yeah, so that was my initial initial reaction. Yeah. <laughs> um, I suppose we're going to see what, what's going to come next. Is there going to be a sort of a theme that kind of links the pieces together? Um, not that they necessarily should be. Um, I think it's I think it's really good to have sort of I don't know how you would label it so but critical art or you know political art or rather than just sort of purely kind of nicey nicey aesthetic art um, to have it in, in a place like this um, because you know the vast majority of the people who come here are just general members of the public but probably don't really engage with art you know in terms of their sort of political experience or their personal life experience, they probably don't really, like myself, really see art as being something that's that relevant to them. Um, but clearly it is, and it's part, a sort of really important part of the human experience to engage with art and then, um, you know, gain pleasure from it, to gain insight into life and oneself. Um, so in a way it's sort of similar to having you know a sort of miniature library in here or something like that where you can take books that would also be really good because it's just an opportunity for people to have access to resources that they wouldn't necessarily normally have. Um, I went to an exhibition just the other day actually and um, I don't know if you'd call it an art thing necessarily, I suppose it was, it was um, at the Black Cultural Archives in Brixton and they're doing an exhibition on reimagining black women in Britain and it has portraits and audio and written sort of bios and information about these various different um, black British women from sort of like Mary Seacole to you know much more sort of contemporary people like Olive Morris and people like that so yeah that was really good that was that was very informative um, more of a sort of informative thing rather than a kind of obviously with this you kind of it's a symbolic thing so you kind of engage it to interpret your own meaning whereas with that it's more sort of like historical gaining historical information and stuff like that so it's more different um, well for me it was just really empowering to be in a room where black women were being kind of honoured in that way, um, especially black British women. Um, you know, usually when we talk about black women, it's sort of like Angela Davis and, you know, whoever else, who were obviously really important figures, but, you know, these are, the women in that exhibition were, you know, from Manchester, from places that I've been to and that I have links with. And so it was quite a sort of, um, confidence boosting I would say in a way as well as inspiring learning about different things that they've done and actions that were taken and you know when you realise that you're, well I mean I don't know if I could say I've established it as such but um, the picture the long rectangular one the drone I mean I'm not totally sure what that background is but to me I sort of had it down as like um wallpaper and the drone is kind of taking the place of like a flying duck. Just sorry, just one second. Good afternoon, Moss Side and Human Community Development Trust. Uh, hi. 
Oh right, um, was it somebody in African Caribbean mental health by any chance? Because I'm just on reception you see, um, and there's lots of organisations based in the building but when they call out it just says this number so I don't actually know who called you. Oh, it's the Windrush Millennium Centre on Alexander Road. Okay. Thank you, bye. <sighs> so, yeah, I kind of thought it was a bit like, um, you know, like how you'd have flying ducks on, on the wall, on the wallpaper. But obviously it's a drone, it's not a flying duck. Um, or some sort of military aircraft of some description. Um, so my understanding of it is that you know this sort of this constantly being at war, this constantly sort of my taxes paying for these pieces of equipment that are then being used to bomb other parts of the world that are thousands of miles away. It's so continuous, it's so you know, unrelenting. It's like well, we always seem to be bombing someone, um, but at the same time, we sort of hear very little about it. People don't really talk about it in the media that much. When they do, it's in a very kind of reductive way, where it's like a hundred people were killed today in Iraq. End of. Um, so I almost see it sort of. It's become like a kind of motif of our era. This this war. And, the instruments of war um, and how people are just comfortable with it, you know, they're comfortable with with this idea of constantly being at war to the extent where they could have, you know, military aircraft on the walls. Um, yeah, that's, that's my understanding of that piece. So I, I, I really like that, I find it very interesting. Obviously, I don't know if that's what the artist meant. Yeah. And then the other ones, I haven't quite finished figuring them out yet. Um, obviously, the faith with the fist, like that, it's a bit like black power fist. Um, so that's sort of, again, perhaps to what I was talking about before about tapping into historical and political legacies and using. You know those histories to give you faith in terms of your current struggles. And um, the law of one is obviously the heart, but it's kind of reducing it to, well, not reducing it, but depicting it as its sort of biological um, function, biological object. Um, so that's interesting. Perhaps that's something to do with, you know, the heart as a as an organ, it's kind of one of the, or perhaps the most essential in the brain, in terms of you know functioning as a as a living organism. Um, and so, if it's removed, then obviously you die. Um, so yeah, you can't have any love in the world without a sort of genuine heart, without genuine um, feeling. Um, but I mean, then again heart disease is the biggest killer in this country so there's lots lots of people with lots of things wrong with their hearts and I think maybe that could be a metaphor for sort of global society and then the hope one is obviously the barbed wire which is usually used to keep people out of places or basically keep them in and um, so it's sort of symbolic of a barrier of some description um, so regarding hope, sort of juxtaposed with barriers, I suppose it's perhaps that you will, you know, break through those those obstacles. You'll get past them. Um, you know that even though the door might be closed or there might be barbed wire there, that you will work out how to get past it or over it or under it in one way or another. So I think the the three are very well. All four pieces are very political message um, but I think it's also sort of spiritual in the sense that it's talking about you know um, almost even religious in terms of faith love and hope 
kind of really you know, base human philosophical sort of concepts. So I think they work really well as a, as a trio. And I think they're very interesting pieces to pick for this this organisation, this, this building. Um, because I mean, a lot of the people who come here are sort of struggling in one way or another. So it'd be interesting to see what they, what they make of it, how they engage with it, and you know, whether it speaks to them or not, like it has to me.